Alrighty gang, we're going to derive the Van't Hoff equation two different ways and go over some of its conditions and its graph as well. So let's begin. We'll start off with the Gibbs energy and equilibrium equation, the change in Gibbs energy G of a reaction R under standard state, so a constant pressure of one bar, equals negative RT ln K, and K is our equilibrium constant. And the other equation we'll use is the Gibbs energy equation. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And if you look at these two equations, they both equal delta G on the left-hand side, which means the right-hand sides have to be equal to each other. So if we make them equal to each other, we're left with this here. And I've labeled this equation one just for later when we're graphing, but to get to our Van Hoff equation we'll divide both sides by negative RT and then take the derivative with respect to T to give us this right here. And we have normal derivatives like single variable derivatives, not partials, because we're assuming that the entropy change and the enthalpy change for the process is constant or temperature independent. So what that means is that it doesn't matter what temperature you do the reaction at, delta H won't change the value of it, and the value of delta S won't change. They are temperature dependent, so they do change with temperature, but over small temperature ranges, we can sometimes assume that they're constant. And this is one of the requirements of the Van't Hoff equation. So if we do that, this derivative will leave it as is. This becomes the derivative of one over T, which is negative one over T squared, and then this is the derivative of a constant, which is zero. So this whole thing becomes the differential form of the Van't Hoff equation. Cool, so that's method one. Method two, we'll start off with the same equation as before, the Gibbs energy equilibrium equation. And from here, we're gonna divide both sides by T and then take the derivative with respect to T. So this is what it looks like. So see, we divided this by T, so this is delta G divided by T taking the derivative with respect to t, and since we divided by t, this t is gone, and now we have the derivative with respect to t. Hope, hope you can see that, I hope that wasn't too many steps. Now, with this equation in hand, we're going to jump to another equation, the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation. And I've derived this equation many, many ways, you can check those links out if you like, but this is the differential form right here. And the left-hand sides of these two equations are equal to each other, which means the right-hand sides have to be equal to each other. So if we equate the right-hand sides, we're like, boom, just like that. We've got the Van't Hoff equation in differential form. Yay! Now, in this form, it's not the most useful form for us, like for exams and stuff. So to get it to the more useful integrated form, we'll multiply both sides by dt and then integrate. So that's what we did, multiply, so dt is now on the side, and then integrate. This is state one and state two. And this integral might look complicated, but imagine ln k is x. So this is the integral of dx, which is just x. So if we do that, we're left with this here. This is state two minus state one. Delta h and r are constant, so they get yanked out of the integral, and the integral of one over t squared is negative one over t. So we're left with this one right here. We'll merge these two terms together using the log law, and that, my friends, gives us the Van't Hoff equation in its integrated form. Cool beads. Now, here we can compare the equilibrium constants at two different temperatures. So it's not like the temperature is changing, okay? Imagine you're doing the process twice. You're doing it at one temperature, which will give you an equilibrium constant, and then you're doing it at another temperature, which gives you a different equilibrium constant. And a requirement of this equation is that the entropy change and enthalpy change are temperature independent. Uh, we're assuming pressure volume work only, so no electrical or other types of work. This is for a closed system. Cool. Now for the graph, we're going to go back to that equation that I labeled as one from before. And we're going to divide both sides by negative RT to get ln K on the left-hand side. And then we just divide it by negative RT to get this on the right-hand side. And if we compare this to a straight line, like Y equals MX plus B, ln K becomes our Y. This is our slope. And 1 over T is our X. And this is our Y-intercept. A graph of ln K versus 1 over T is a straight line if it obeys the Van't Hoff equation. So what this looks like, this is our straight line equation right here, ln k versus 1 over t is a straight line. If we have a graph of ln k versus 1 over t, that will give us a straight line, assuming it behaves the Van't Hoff equation with a slope of negative delta h over r. So if you know the slope, you can calculate delta h this way. All right, y'all, hang in there. I know thermal's not an easy subject. It was, I'm with you every step of the way, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.